This is Ukrainian Radio. In this half an hour broadcast of Radio Ukraine International, you will hear the news bulletin, the weekly press review program World.ua, and a story about a new radio station to be launched in Ukraine to represent the Roma community in this country. This will be presented by Vira Mali. First, the news read by Bogdan Zhuk. The situation in the eastern Ukraine conflict zone remained stable as the combined Russian and separatist forces mostly observed the ceasefire Ukraine's counterterrorism operation press center said on Friday. According to the report, some cases of the use of weapons by the enemy were chaotic and provocative. The militants attacked Ukrainian army positions five times overnight, mostly with the use of small arms. One Ukrainian soldier was killed in the conflict in the past day, spokesman for the presidential administration on army operation, Andrei Lysenk said at the briefing in Kyiv. Over the last 24 hours, in a blast caused by an unknown explosive, one Ukrainian serviceman was killed. The causes of the incident are being investigated. There were no injured in the explosion, he said on Friday. The foreign ministers of the so-called Normandy Four countries, Ukraine, Germany, France and Russia, plan to hold a meeting next week, Foreign Minister of Ukraine Pavlo Klimkin said on Friday. We agree on a possible meeting at the ministerial level. We think that such meeting could take place by the end of next week. We have not agreed on a specific date or place yet, he said. According to the minister, there is a possibility of negotiations of the leaders of the four countries after this ministerial meeting. Foreign Minister Klimkin will take part in the trilateral trade consultations of the EU, Ukraine and Russia in Brussels on Monday, September 7th. During the consultations, the parties will discuss Russian concerns regarding the introduction of a deep and comprehensive free trade area between Ukraine and the European Union under the economic part of the association agreement from January 1st. Klimkin's agenda also includes meetings with EU foreign policy chief Federica Mogherini and with NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg. Aggression of the Russian Federation in Ukraine poses a challenge to security in Europe, said a statement of the representatives of eight Nordic Baltic countries and the eight on the results of the meeting on regional security in Copenhagen. The Russian aggression in Ukraine poses a challenge to European security, including the countries of the Nordic and Baltic region, the document reads. The foreign ministers of Denmark, Estonia, Finland, Iceland, Latvia, Lithuania, Norway and Sweden pointed out that it is necessary to meet these challenges with a common solidarity and cooperation. The Donetsk city court in Savchenko, a military pilot and a member of Ukrainian parliament, is charged with complicity in the killing of two Russian journalists who were covering the conflict in eastern Ukraine. The court's press officer said the hearing will be held behind closed doors. The Rostov region's court on August 21st declined a request by Savchenko's defense for a change of the territorial jurisdiction of her case to Moscow. Nadia Savchenko has been in custody in Russia since July 2014. She pleads not guilty and says she was kidnapped and then illegally moved to Russia. Ukraine and the international community have repeatedly stressed the case had been fabricated and political and demanded her release. The defense lawyers for Ukrainian filmmaker Alexandrov have filed an appeal against the sentence. I am asking for the sentence to be reversed and for Alexandrov to be fully acquitted, lawyer Dmitry Dinsa told reporters on Friday. Dinsa said his appeal states that the court ruling is unjust, there are procedural irregularities and discrepancies of factual information that is stated in the judge's verdict. The lawyer said the appeal will be considered by the Russian Supreme Court and the appeal will not be considered before October. As we have reported, Sentsov was arrested in May last year at his home in Ukraine's Crimean Peninsula, annexed by Russia two months prior. Sentsov denies all charges and claims he is persecuted for pro-Ukrainian views. And that's the news. I am Bogdan Zhuk.
This is Radio Ukraine International with a weekly press review program World.ua. I am Ivan Zhezhera and studio producer is Lyudmila Sudakova. Two people have been killed and six wounded in an ambush on a Ukrainian army vehicle near the rebel-held city of Luhansk, informed Kiev Post. It was the first major incident since a renewed truce between the armies came into effect on Tuesday, September 1st. A spokesman said the vehicle had hit a mine and come under sniper fire. Only minor violations of the Minsk ceasefire were reported over the past few days. Military spokesman Andriy Lysenko said the two people killed on Tuesday were both civilians taking part in an anti-smuggling operation northeast of Luhansk on the demarcation line between rebel-held and government areas. Six soldiers were among the wounded, officials said. The Ukrainian army reported that since September 1st, the situation along the contact line has been largely quiet, wrote Kiev Post. Later, German Foreign Minister Frank-Walter Steinmeier has described as reassuring the decrease in ceasefire violations along the dividing line in Donbass and urged both sides of the conflict to stick to the truce. The truce, which has been in effect since Tuesday, as well as the palpable decrease in fighting along the front line, is a reassuring signal for the start of a new academic year that instills hope in school children and their families on both sides. But this is not the first time that the fragile sprouts of hope are being trampled on by a concerned party, which is why I am calling on both sides of the conflict to continue to observe the truce. The minister said in a statement issued by the German embassy in Kiev. 